Hi everybody, how you all doing? Mark here, I think I'm live. Yeah, I think I am. How's everybody doing? Everyone have a great new year. Fantastic. Uh, oh, well, apart from you, yeah, but that's your own fault. Um, yes, hi, happy new year everyone. Hope you all had a fantastic New Year's Eve and you all got drunk and done ridiculous things. Why not? <laughs> I had a pretty pretty good New Year's um New Year's Eve, yeah. Went around a, uh to a friend's place and uh, New Year's Eve we had a, having a New Year's Eve party. Uh, it was supposed to be a costume party and of course I went not in costume. I, I had a Batman t shirt on and I was wearing pants. What more do they want? Yeah. You know, me wearing pants at that time of night on New Year's Eve is a miracle. So, <laughs> so um, yeah. So uh, I had a really good time there. Uh, had a few few drinks and you know, had a laugh and a joke and everything, as you do with these things. And yeah, I um, I'm sure everyone out there knows about the YCC, the Facebook page group. Facebook page group, yeah, well, that's what you call them. Anyway, yeah, the Facebook page, the YCC, the YouTube comic book community, as uh, first started up by My Butter One, as uh, they had a awards ceremony uh, just before Christmas. Actually, I didn't want to say it in my Christmas uh, blog on this because. I, some big head or anything like that. But I come second in the YCC's famous, uh, favourite, famous, favourite YouTube channel. That's brilliant. Fantastic. I got beaten by Matt on Comics, and quite frankly, I can't think of a better person to beat me <laughs> in in a, um, a awards ceremony like that. That's just absolutely brilliant. I think Matt on Comics deserves a round of applause, without a doubt. He's a brilliant guy. Absolutely fantastic guy, sort of the earth, and you know he deserves deserves winning that without a doubt. Okay, uh, what else is there? What else is there? What else was I going to say? I was going to say something else. Nope, nope, it's gone. It's gone. It might come back to me. I might all of a sudden blurt out something completely random from what I'm actually showing you on the video. Uh, just well, actually, go if you haven't if you're watching this video, yeah, and you haven't and you've got a Facebook account. And you're not a member of the YCC. Seriously, go over and join them. Okay, they're a brilliant bunch of guys. Absolutely fantastic. If if you like comics, computer games, Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, anything really, movies, TV shows, anything geeky, nerdy, sci-fi, fancy sort of stuff, go over. And join the group because it's brilliant. And the more people that are over there, yeah, the more people that join, the bigger the community can get, and the more fun we can have with you know everybody's favourite things that we like about all this sci-fi, fantasy, superhero, comic booky sort of stuff. Okay, right, excellent. And if you are a member of the YCC, tell everybody about it and get them to join the YCC. Yes, five. What are they on? Four hundred now. Four hundred members now. I believe on the on the uh, Facebook group. So yeah, they're doing well, really well. Right. I guess you guys want to see what I've uh, my haul, don't you? Okay. And we'll, we'll start off like I usually start off with magazines, and it's quite quite a small bundle of magazines actually, because there wasn't any 2000 AD the last time I went to. The little village shop that I go to get my magazines, because uh, uh, they had the 2000 AD Prog 2014, which they bring out once a year. It sort of covers two or three weeks of at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next issue, next time I go to Forbidden Planet, uh, Forbidden Planet. Next time I go to the the village shop, I should have at least one issue of 2000 AD, maybe two. But um, I've still got my piece collections. I get every fortnight. And first up, Doctor Who Figurine Collection Part Nine. There you go. In this issue, we have the the Ice Warrior Grand Marshal Skaldach from the Eleventh Doctor story. 
Um, Cold War, that was it. Thank you very much. <laughs> there you go. Who saw the uh, Who saw the the Doctor Who Christmas special? Yeah. Did I say anything about that Christmas special? Yeah. It was okay. It was okay. And but I think Peter Capaldi is going to do amazing things with that series. I really do. I have full faith in Peter Capaldi to make Doctor Who as good as it has been, if not better. Um, the only problem I have is I have seen that it's not going to be on TV now until September and it's this year. September. Well, no. This is autumn. So I'm imagining it's going to start... They usually start at bank holidays in the UK. So I imagine it's going to start on the last Saturday of August this year. Let's have a quick look on this old calendar thing here. But I'll, whilst we're doing that, I'll show you um, Grand Marshal Skullach. If I can show you that. There you go. That's where this figurine looks like. Whilst you're looking at that, I'll just get to August here. So August. So in August in the UK, Bank Holiday Monday is on the 25th of August. So I am guessing... I'm just just a guess. I'm guessing that Doctor Who will start on the 23rd of August because they usually like starting it on bank holiday weekends. So yeah, never know. But I've heard I've heard two things about that. One is it's going to start in September, and the other one was. It's going to start in in like the bank holiday weekend sort of thing of August, so we shall see. And what uh, ramifications that'll have on the Christmas special, I don't know. I imagine they still have a Christmas special this year. There you go. That's the Doctor Who figurine collection. Now this one, I know I say this every time I show you this magazine and show you the this this thing. Well, nearly every time. But I honestly had no idea this Batmobile existed. I really did not. And it is such a... What's the word I'm looking for? Whimsical. It's such a whimsical little Batmobile. It is. It's the, it's the Batmobile Batman Automobile number 26. And that's what it looks like. That's, that is the Batman Batmobile from Detective Comics 219. How uh, that that's just wow. There's no there's there's yes. I think it's pretty cool. I'll show you the the actual the actual figure. Yeah. There you go. How cool is that? No, you got the the Batman. It's like uh, what is it? It's one of the loads of the Batmobiles in the 1950s. It's like a battering ram sort of thing. And it is an Oldsmobile. And this was in a Batman story that was uh, about a um, an Oldsmobile race. A bit slower there. Yeah. And that's it. Mind the glare. There you go. That's a funky Batmobile. I think it's a really funky Batmobile. But it does uh, it does sort of tell me that they are going to be showing and making models of every single Batmobile that has ever been in a Batman comic. Uh, I'll show you what the la the next issue of one is. It's the Batmobile from Batman Legends of the Dark Knight number one five six, which doesn't look that dissimilar to the Batmobile. That was in the Batman, uh, the first Batman Tim Burton movie. Apart from the fact that the front is a bit different. But that's the next issue. So we'll see. They do seem to be pulling these Batman Batmobiles out, you know, of the air, of the ether, shall we say? But it's still interesting. So there you go. Uh, just, just in case anybody's interested. The next issue of the Doctor Who figurine collection is the silent, or a silent, if you want, from the day of the moon. There you go. Okay. 
And uh, just in case anybody is interested, yeah, uh, the next issue of Batman, uh, sorry, the, the Doctor Who figurine collection is the silence from the day of the moon. Okay. And just in case, and no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I can't do it three times in a row. <laughs> look at that, I lost three viewers doing that. <laughs> um, let's have a quick look on comments. Uh, Rom's Comics, can't wait, dude. Well, it's here now, and <laughs> thanks for watching. And yay, live! Yay, live! Uh, for anybody who is watching, who is watching this when it goes up on YouTube properly. Uh, the uh, a Mahoney of uh, the Mahoney Show. He's doing these videos uh, inside the YCC, where he's I suppose, interviewing members of the YCC, people who do videos on YouTube with comic books and that, who are also members of the YCC. And the last video he did was with Rom's Comics, and it was a brilliant video. Absolutely brilliant. I've uh, got to say, hats off to Mahoney for thinking up the idea. Great idea. And also, Rom's Comics. Brilliant video. Fantastic. Right. Right. I'm not too sure if it's the same around the world as it is in the UK, or even if it's the same in any other part of the UK. After Christmas... And, and after New Year's, the shops drastically drop the prices of stuff for all their like the gifts, the little um, for the for the gifts of people that you don't actually either know what to get them or you know them but you don't know them well enough to like spend proper money on them sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's like the 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 um, the bottles of little tiny bottles of whiskey that you get that's like have about one or two shots in there that are just just enough to like have a little wee dram sort of, of whiskey uh, or they've got little tiny bottles of champagne or, or wine or such and these these get uh, they're usually about sort of five pounds or something like at the time but when Christmas is gone and nobody's buying them they drop in price and it's the same with other stuff as well, like Christmas decorations, food. I mean, I've bought about four packs of mince pop, sick mince. Yeah. Excuse me. I've bought about four or five packs of mince pies for 50p each. Um, purely for the fact that I do like mince pies, and it's 50p each, you know. So <laughs> I've got a big tub of. Uh, this is going to completely bore people who are watching this when about comics, but it's not that comics. I've got a big tub of dry roasted peanuts. Should have been about three or four pounds. It dropped down in price of one pound fifty because it's got Christmas decorations on it, and the shops just want to get rid of it. And if you know me, you'll know I like Jack Daniels. Oh, I like Jack Daniels. One day I'm going to have something where it's going to be ping sponsored by Jack Daniels, <laughs> and they're going to pay me in JDs. It's going to be great. <laughs> but um, yeah, and this this these um. They always bring out these little gift packs, like a little mini miniature vial of JDs or famous grouse or Gordon's gin or whatever, and you have a glass or a tumbler or I think they got they do one with backgammon sort of thing. And this one was, was a mug. This didn't have any alcohol with it, unfortunately, but it was a mug, Jack Daniels mug, and it had fudge in it, which had Jack Daniels flavoured fudge in it. Oh. And that cost me two pound fifty. Okay, I uh, don't worry. I'm getting somewhere with this. This is starting to get up to geekiness, all right? It's building its way up to geekiness, all right? Then I went into another shop and just just checked over their Christmas Christmas holiday sort of gifts and that to see if they've got anything there that yeah you know, it could be either handy for next year if I need to give somebody a Christmas gift or just something that's there that I think oh that looks interesting for me. And I found something interesting for me. I managed to pick up my first Star Wars mug. <sighs> I know, it's great. Um, I do sort of have a weird sort of like collection of mugs, actually. If you've seen a few of my videos, you might have seen my 
my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. mug, which isn't actually part of the TV show. It was brought out way before the TV show was brought out. Uh, and I've got a Captain America mug and a Judge Dredd mug and loads, loads of stuff. It's one of those things where if I see them and they're cheap, I'm not going to pay stupid money for, for something I'm going to stick, stick water or tea in or something. But um, if it's interesting, I'll, I'll get it. And I've got this. My first Star Wars mug. For one pound eighty, they've got Vader on it there, the um, Imperial badge there, and uh, I don't know if you can see that it's actually embossed. That's raised up. I don't know, can you see it there? There you go. Yeah. And then inside, now I'm thinking that this is supposed to have been something that uh, people who have got kids. Uh, you'd buy this to give to them to give to their father because inside it says let me see that I am your father yeah I don't have kids I'm not planning on having kids anytime soon and so I'm likely not to have this bought to me by my son or daughter so in that case I'm going to buy it for myself <laughs> but how cool is that that's great stuff Right, I'll put that in there because it's the tag. Uh, right, comics. Because as I always said, this is what everybody's come here for, and we've got six viewers now, and they knew that all the buff and gump was going to be gone in the first like 10 15 minutes. Just have a look at the comments, see who's uh, commenting on this. And we have Lewis Pierce. Uh, so not picking up the new Marvel graphic novel collection type magazine. Uh, <laughs> that one. Yes. I see the ultimate Marvel graphic novel collection is still going. It's still got seven issues to go. That's still seventy pounds I've got to pay to get the full set of sixty issues of that. This has started early. I thought this was going to start in February. It's not. It started two months earlier than I thought it was going to start up and it's a £10. I know the next issue's going to be like £5.99 so I might get that. The only thing I can think of is I have a word with my local comic book shop ask them to put it by for me but then say to them can I pick it up like the first sort of like four issues up um, as and when I can, so I can complete the ultimate graphic novel collection that I've got here, which is why I'm, I'm tapping this. You can't see it, but I can. Um, and then I can get this in when it starts up properly. So on some months when there's only two of these in there, I'll pick up three of them, that sort of thing. But yes, I want to get this because it looks really cool. Uh, um, and Mr. Buell, Mr. Buells, is that Buells? Yeah, Buells. Hello, Mr. Buells. That is a cool picture. In fact, everyone's got cool pictures on there. Um, Haha, I wish I got the TARDIS issue. Frowny face. Could not find it anywhere. Do you know what? I could only find it in one place, and that was in South, was a W. H. Smith's in Southampton. And they had three copies of it. And I got one. And it was. So, yeah, the only other thing I can think of you could possibly do is either eBay or. You should be able to go onto the Eagle Moss website for the Doctor Who figurine collection, and with any luck, you'll be able to order it from them. Now, I tried to do that once with the Marvel figurine collection when I missed out on the Galactus figurine, which I'm still trying to find. <laughs> so I phoned them up. I said, yeah, can I order it? And uh, they said, yeah, no worries. And I gave them all my details and everything. They went, yep, yeah, no problem. That'd be in the post for you. No worries. Hung up the phone. Waited a week. Nothing. Waited two weeks. Nothing. Phoned them up again. Said, look, I've ordered this thing. Oh, yeah, your order got cancelled. What do you mean my order got cancelled? Yeah, you're not a member. But your website says, you know, so I don't know if they've changed their, their, um, rules and that about people who aren't 
ordering it from the website or from you know subscription, but they're still getting it other, in other means. Uh, I don't know. So it's always worth a try to get in contact with them. But that was whoa, that was about ten years ago, I think. The the Marvel figurine collection started up. Wow, it's a long time ago. But there was two hundred issues of it. So there you go. so there you go. That's the comments so far. Uh, oh no, uh, Mr. Buells again. The new Marvel collection, another bastard thing that won't be bloody anywhere when I finally get to shops. Ah, oh, dude. Um, I know this one's one ninety nine. I know that's not helping you much, but so you might be able to pick it up off the internet, like eBay or something like that, for fairly cheap at the moment. So fingers crossed for you, mate. I hope you get it. I really do. Really, really do. Right. Comics, because this is what everybody's come here to see. They haven't come here to see see me show you guys my mugs and talk about mince pies and pots of peanuts and all that. You want to see my comics? It's quite a small stash. Like I said, there's a tiny haul. It's only this many. Okay, so it's just going to be a fairly quick one. He says after uh, he's already been talking for about half an hour. No, no, I started it at 10 past 12. No, it's about 20 minutes I've been talking, so that's not too bad. Right. Oh, yes, of course. Before I do this, right, before I do this, in my last video, I showed you guys this. Avengers 24 point now, right? It's bagged, and it's got a poster in it, right? Now, I asked people on the last video, should I open this up? Okay. I also asked people on the YCC and the Facebook group YCC, should I open this up? So for any, if you're watching this when it's recorded, don't bother answering. But if you're watching this now live, yeah, put in the comment section down below because there's six viewers there. So at least there's got to be at least five people watching this. Put in the comment section down below whether you want me to open this up or not. Okay. And then by the end of this video, I'll tally up all the answers. And I'll see what you come out with. Okay. If everybody says open, if the majority of people say open it, I'll open it. I'll live on air. If the majority of people say don't open it, I won't open it. Okay. It's got a poster in the back. That's why it's bagged for. It's got a poster in the back of it, which is supposed to be the the same picture as is the. Uh, there's a variant issues from issue three, I think it is, or I can't remember. It's one or three of the new Avengers series that they got here and it goes on to Mighty Avengers number four I think it was but there's 12 issues that have got this picture on it <clears throat> so at the moment the don't opens are winning not to open people are saying not don't open this if it sways your choice I have got the Mike Allred cover of Avengers 24 point now, waiting for me at my local comic shop in Planet Southampton. So, yeah, say in the comment section down below whether you want me to open it or not. All right, and we'll see what happens. Right, comics, here we go. Uh, I went to, I just popped in randomly to the, the little shop in town called Hobos that sell some back issues they haven't had many new delivery of, I haven't had a new delivery of back issues in there for some time now so they're a bit sparse on new comics by the looks of it or not new comics as new comics but new back issues shall we say so we'll get the ball rolling I think I picked up one two three four five six seven eight I've got eight comics and they cost me eight quid, so that's not too bad. Eight that's a pound each near enough. Right. This was a great series when it first came out. Uh Legion and this is Legion ninety one number thirty one. Yeah, thirty one. And if you can see up there, this is uh, part of the War of the Gods. This is chapter six of the War and the Gods mini series, which could have been such a great mini series. Uh, if it was given the the editorial freedom it needed to have, there you got the real Shazam fighting the real Lobo. Great stuff, and the art, artwork is 
beautifully beautifully painted cover there brilliant oh look advert for child play 3 and this is another really good series from DC back in the day Dark Stars do you remember that these were the uh, what was it there was a, a group of beings that were an offshot of the guardians of Oa and they were called the controllers if I remember correctly and they ended up deciding they was like big tall where the where the, the guardians of Oa was like small blue guys the controllers were big tall purple guys and they looked a bit like uh, they sort of dressed a bit like time lords actually from Gallifrey it was like big big collars and that coming out of the back of their necks and everything and wavy big flowing clothes and cloaks and that and they decided to start up their own intergalactic police force which were called the Dark Stars because the Green Lantern Corp was going through a bit of a tough patch at the time shall we say so this is the first this is issue 11 of the Dark Stars and this is also part four of a crossover event that incorporated the Legion series which this come from yeah comics and Green Lantern series at the time and also the Dark Stars comics and what's it all these bad comics that slide off on that there you go so there's issue 11 and that's Trinity part 4 and this is actually the first Trinity series that they had not to be confused with the Trinity series that they had later on which was the 52 issue one issue a week series that I got a complete set of and it made no sense whatsoever um, I think I really need to go back and read that one because it just yeah completely confused me that one and uh, we've got Dark Stars number 12 Trinity number 7 there you go and there are those li these little labels here on the bags not on the comments and the Dark Stars uniform in oh, when was it 2004 2005 DC brought out a series called Manhunter where you had this uh, female hero who she was a lawyer by day but then when criminal when like super criminals got off on technicalities and that she then got dressed up as the Manhunter and went out and served her own form of justice on them and it was a Dark Stars Dark Stars jumpsuit that she wore as part of her costume she went into like a, a this like evidence lockup thing and nicked uh, Dark Stars the Dark Stars jumpsuit it was a energy staff from one of the original Manhunter robots and I can't remember where she got the claws from. Can't remember where she got those, like her claw mechanical gloves from. Or that I can't remember where she got them. But yeah, it, her costume was a mismatch of all these bits and pieces from different characters and that through the DC universe. It was a brilliant series. If you can find it, see if you can pick it up. Uh, two issues of Cy Force from the Marvel New Universe, which now isn't new. Obviously, and we've got issue eight of Cy Force. I'm looking to see if I can get a complete set of these new universe comics because they were quite good at the, at the time. Spinning out of Secret Wars 2 from the Marvel Universe at their time, and Cy Force number nine. That's that. Let's have a quick goosey. See if there's any more comments. <laughs> um, the Snow Wabbit says, "Open it! Open it! Open it! Open it! Open it! Open it! Open it!" <sighs> do I class each one of those as a vote, or do I class? <laughs> and 
Mr. Bills, Eagle Moss sold out. I mean, could get on the bay, but adding another five of postage. The same with Avengers I'd picked up in shops, but hate paying too much postage, you know. And don't want to pay too much anything there. Yeah, okay, so we've got another vote for opening it as well. Okay, so that's two opens it on here. Uh, Lewis Pierce, open it. Looking f looking for a frame for your poster. You want it on your wall. Sounds cool. Uh, Rom's Comics, you, he kind of wants me to open it, but I, I don't know. Just open it, go for it. <laughs> okay, um, I think that's actually getting the... Uh, Getting the votes for opening it a bit higher up, actually. We'll have to have a look and see what uh, what we get. All right, let's have a look. Uh, from the original Valiant series, Magnus Robot Fighter number twenty-one. I can't believe I only paid a pound for that. It's great stuff. Great, great stuff. And Shadow Man, number, my eyes are going funny, number 18. And that one's got Archer and Armstrong in it. Got the name then, Chris, again. Well, that is a great cover. Brilliant stuff. And finally, for the back issues, <coughs> because uh, I only got eight of them, in. Oh my life, when was this? 19. In the site the 1990s, I think it was mid to late 1990s, Marvel and Image Comics did a crossover with. I think it was X Men and some of the titles from Image Comics that Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld had their hands in. So you had. Uh, do you know, my mind's gone blank with the comics that they actually produced this. So let's see if there's anything in here with it. If I can get it open. Let's take the sensei off. Don't want no one that sensei on your comics. Uh, let's have a look. I don't think it has actually. No, it hasn't got here. I know they did a lot of things like X Men and. Wildcats, I think it was, and yeah, Deadpool, or no, Cable, was it Cable and Ripclaw? I think it was another mini, it was another one shot on that that they did, and this one is X Force and Young Blood, number one. There you go. I'm really getting this purely for the fact that I'm trying to increase the amount of Marvel comics that I've got that I missed out on getting when I was only buying DC Comics at the time. And it looks interesting. Who's the artist on here? Stephen Platt is the pencil it uh, does done pencils here. Along with loads of other people. Whose names I can't read because they've put it in a weird sort of like italic sort of like print. And uh, written by Eric Stevenson uh, with Robert Napton. So there you go. That's that one. Well, like I said, there was loads of these that they did. Uh, was there, did they do a Captain America one as well? I don't know. I want to I say they did a Captain America one or an Avengers one. But I'm not quite sure whether they did or not. I might have just either imagined that or dreamed it. But yeah, so there you go. X Force Young Blood number one. Pretty cool. And let's have a look. More comments? Nope, no more comments just yet. That's it there. It's amazing that uh, sorry, I've got a thing up on here on um, YouTube and a little 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 bell alarm bell sort of thing. And it's got on there two things and it says 
on here a group of people that I have no idea is are saying no to viewing my video. That's fine. I don't mind. Um, I didn't realise that when you did a Google Hangout, it literally broadcast to every single person who's got a Google account. I don't know. Oh, well, there you go. Right. New titles. New comics. Now, if I get these in semblance of order, there we go. Right. Get back to here so I can see my ugly mug on the video. Hello. Oh man, that's so weird having no hair. The really weird thing is, I cut my hair on New Year's Day. Was it New Year's Day? Yeah, it was New Year's Day. I had this done. I did just got the, the strimmers out and did it. Um, and it's already grown. It wasn't like this. It was a lot shorter than this when I did it on New Year's Day. And it's only the fourth, now the fifth of January. My hair is already grown a lot. So, <laughs> so, so there you go. By the time I go to um, by the time I go to London Super Comic Convention in March, then I'll have a full head of hair again. And I'd just like to say to my butter one, thank you very much for my birthday present. Yes, yes. I look forward to uh, look forward to going to my very very first comic book convention in March. It is the LSCC, the London Super Comic Convention, uh, on the 15th of March. I'm only going one day. Because I think that's going to be plenty for me. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. So anybody out there, and I'll probably, uh, I will probably remind you later on. Anybody out there who's watching this video, if you see me at London Comic Book Convention uh, on the 15th of March, just stop me and say hello if you recognise me. And if you don't recognise me, then don't worry about it. Right, <laughs> new comics. Uh, this is a free preview which I got sent to me just randomly got sent to me and it is the Avengers World all new Marvel Now Avengers World preview which has got Avengers World Black Widow all new invaders Avengers World and more Ooh. and I've got to say the only thing that really interested me on this was probably Black Widow <laughs> let's have a look what else did they have in there uh, they had AI. They got Avengers World, which looks a bit. I've got nothing wrong with anime or manga style of artwork in that. I do, I do like it, but I just don't think that it suits the Avengers that much. Uh, I think it's. Yeah, what do you think? That's the artwork for Avengers World. What do you guys think? I yeah, I don't know. And Steve Rogers there, to me, apart from the fact he's got two eyes, he looks very like Cable in that picture. Whether it's my imagination or not, I don't know. But <laughs> there you go. And all new, all new Invaders, number one, with James Robinson. Now this does look good. This does look good. Uh, I'll show you. I don't think those two pages actually connect with each other in any way, shape or form. But... That looks amazing. I'll take it that's the Human Torch, the original Android Human Torch. And also there's Cap and, Cap and Winter Soldier, Stroke Bucky. Uh, Black Widow, number one. Artwork in this, it looks okay. I'll, I'll probably get it because it's a Black Widow title and I do like the character of Black Widow. There you go, there's that. That's the artwork for Black Widow there. And all new X Factor number one. Which I've got to say doesn't really grab me. I'll show you the artwork for it, but it just doesn't know. It looks a bit like, if anybody remembers it, the Eon Flux cartoon or animated series they had on MTV in the 90s and, and um, sort of time that's what that artwork looks like to me reminds me of the Eon Flux animated series that they had in the 90s 
So yeah, it doesn't really sort of like grab me. This it doesn't really pop out at me to make me want to get it. And you've got Thunderbolts 20 point now, which has got the uh, Ghost Rider in it. And that's the artwork for that. <clears throat> and there's just little adverts for Guardians of the Galaxy 11 point now, all new X-Men 22 point now, which are both part of the crossover story arc that's in those two comics, The Trial of Jean Grey, where they take the young Jean Grey, who has never been the Phoenix, and they put her on trial. <laughs> I think. That's what I've got from the blurb anyway. <laughs> and then you have Savage Wolverine 14 point now. I do like the artwork on that. Who's the artist on there? Richard J. Ezenov. Is an OV. I do like the artwork on that one. I do like the artwork on the Savage Dragon. A Savage Dragon. Savage Wolverine, sorry. 14 point now. That does look nice. But other than that, we'll see. We'll see. So there's probably, probably two in there that I'm looking at. All new invaders. By James Robinson and Black Widow. So there we go. Talking about new issues, I am kicking myself with this one. I really am. I I bought this on eBay uh, from a dealer that I know on there quite well, and I thought I was getting a really good deal on this. And then I went to Forbidden Planet in Southampton, and they were selling it for about one pound forty-five for the first issue of this. And it's the Origins Wolverine Origin Two Number One. With the um, lithograph cover on the front, that one, yeah, that's the one I got as well. Same as one that uh, my butter one's got. Oh, I'm kicking myself because I probably paid about twice as much as I should have actually paid for this one. But hey ho, that's the whole nature of the beast when you pay when you you buy comics, and you know. You live and learn. Could have been worse. I could have been triple. So, <laughs> that's the way I see it. So, uh, Origins 2, Origin 2, Wolverine, number one. Let's we'll see how it goes. Uh, this, I, uh, t tonight, last night, last after, yesterday afternoon, because it is nearly coming up to one o'clock in the morning on the 5th of, 5th of January. Uh, now, uh, yesterday afternoon, I was on the YCC Hangout, the award-winning YCC Hangout, as I say, uh, with the award-winning Matt on Comics, and uh, and <laughs> sorry, and uh, they they have on there the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you have to choose what the comic you thought was good for this week, um, a comic that was bad in your eyes, you know, in your opinion, and um, not ugly, but it was the good, the bad, and the, and the uh, surprise. So a comic that was good in your eyes, a comic that was bad, and a comic that was a surprise to you. This one was my surprise, but it wasn't so much of a surprise because I knew it was written by James Robinson, and I know how good James Robinson can write stories. Uh, I think he's had a bit of a bad patch at the moment. That's my own opinion, but I think Earth 2 was a pretty bad patch for him. Not his best work that he's done, uh, considering that he'd done amazing stuff with Starman, when the Starman series that he did in the 90s and that. Uh, but this is the first issue of J. Rob James Robinson's image comic, The Saviors. And this is just great. A brilliant comic. It's black and white. Uh, which I've got no problem with, and it's about a guy who's, he's basically a stoner, he, all he wants to do is just get chilled, 
relax, have a few, have a few joints, and you know, let the world just roll by him. Roll by him. He ends up finding out that the quiet little town that he lives in has been invaded by alien shapeshifting aliens, and <clears throat> that's when his whole life just comes crashing down around his ears. I have to admit, it does remind me a lot at the moment of, do you remember the old 60s TV series, The Invaders, where, yeah, where they had the aliens that were human, and you had this guy, I think he was a reporter, and he found out that there was an alien invasion of Earth, and he ended up going around America trying to get out of the way, you know, stop these uh, aliens from taking over the Earth, and also trying to stop them from killing him. Um, there was a, there was a, a sort of a plot twist to the thing where, when the aliens were killed, he couldn't just turn around to people and say, "Look, it's an alien. Look, yeah, there's an alien." Because when they were killed, their bodies just disintegrated, and there was no trace of them left. So you know, a bit difficult to show people that there's an alien invasion when there's no evidence around. So. Yeah, but I'm enjoying that at the moment. A really good comic. Saviors, James Robinson. Hopefully he's going to be back on form with this one. Uh, let's have a look. Comments. Ten. Ten comments. Uh, Lewis Pierce might see me at the LSCC also going last year was amazing cool I'm looking forward to it I really am looking forward to it a bit apprehensive because I don't really like going on the underground in London uh, I never have done I, I used to go up to London to, to watch football um, years and years ago and you always used to, have to go on the underground and it's so packed and, and I can imagine that on that day, it's going to be even more packed on the underground going there. But I'll, you know, I could always do what I used to do, which is down about four cans of beer before I got well on the way to London, and that. But I think I'll end up ruining it for everybody by being drunk when I'm on there. So um, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be right. It'll be right. I am looking forward to it though. Really, am looking forward. This is, uh, da, da, da. yep. This will be my first ever comic book convention that I've gone to. So there you go. So be gentle with me. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. Here we go. Last few comics now. And for anybody who's watching this live, and as you like, I still need to know whether I should open this or not. Okay. So let me know. All right. I'll, I'll tally up after the. Uh, after I finish showing you these comics. <laughs> what to me was a great idea to for keeping a character that hasn't really been in comics for a good year now, uh, other than uh, a mini series, a, a Marvel Knights mini series. Uh, and the first four issues of these this little series that he brought out. I enjoyed. I really did enjoy. They were really good two-part stories with Peter Parker in it. This one, mm, I'll show you what it is anyway. It's the Amazing Spider-Man number seven hundred point five. This isn't the variant. I I got the normal cover of this because I just love that picture. That is a great cover with uh, Mary Jane. On Peter Parker's back, they're swinging around um, Manhattan, New York. Great picture, and there's a part of me that enjoyed this this comic because it reminded me of the old Fantastic Four stories you used to have, where they would have a one shot story in the the pages of Fantastic Four where you had either Johnny Storm pulling a joke on Ben Grimm or the other way around. 
I always used to love those comics. I always used to love those stories. I remember one where Johnny got Ben to believe that he was actually growing a beard, growing stubble. And what he did was he got loads of pipe cleaners, <coughs> excuse me, uh, not pipe cleaners, he got loads of straws, sorry, cut them down, coloured them, painted them the same colour as the, the thing's rocky skin, orangey sort of colour, and then super glued them to his face so it looked like he was growing stubble. <laughs> And of course, when the thing woke up, he sort of like looked in the mirror and that. He went, "Hang on a sec, I'm not supposed to have stubble. It's, that's not completely wrong." Yeah. And then all the the practical jokes that they played on each other through that day, you know, carried on sort of thing. I love those stories. I really did love those stories. The whole camaraderie. They yes, they were a bit more. Uh, how can we say a bit more adventurous, possibly a bit more dangerous than the practical jokes you might pull on your friends but then this is the human torch and the thing that we're talking about a guy who's near enough indestructible and a bloke who can combust <laughs> on command into flame so you know you could be getting a little dangerous and it, it was almost it was more of a Tom and Jerry cartoony sort of whimsical jokes that they played on each other rather than really out and out vicious nasty nasty jokes they had so that's one of the reasons why I liked this comic because it was one of those stories. It was a Ben Grimm playing a practical joke on Johnny Storm to a great scale that incorporated all the time and space. Literally. <laughs> the thing I didn't like about it was that it actually pushed Peter Parker back from the main story. You saw him at the beginning where he was trying to get to sleep and then as soon as Johnny Storm turned up, it was a Fantastic Four story. It wasn't an amazing Spider-Man Peter Parker story. It was a Fantastic Four story. And it didn't become a Peter Parker story again right at the very end when he crashes into his bed and he goes, ah, sleep, and then falls asleep again. You know. Um, so, yeah, the, like I said, the other two issues of this, the other four issues of this were really great because they were Peter Parker central. He was a central character. This one... No, if you're looking for a Spider-Man comic, this isn't. It. If you're looking for a Fantastic Four comic, this is a good one. There you go. So that's 700. Amazing Spider-Man 700.5. There you go. And last for you now here. Uh, I haven't had a chance to read this one yet. I am looking forward to it because I do like these characters. And Mark Buckingham's artwork is just beautiful in any case. It's the Dead Boy Detectives number one. Another new Vertigo title. Looking forward to reading this. And I hope that they don't do... I hope that DC doesn't do what they are doing nowadays with characters where they completely destroy the mythos of the character uh, they did it with Phantom Stranger where they just basically turned around and said no, he is Judas Iscariot there is no, he could be there is no, well he might have a, a, something to do with Judas Iscariot or that time period or or you know, he's not a, you know, he's just a completely mythical or, or ethereal character that nobody knows the, the past of you know, DC for me completely destroyed the Phantom Stranger by turning around to him and saying turning around to us and saying no He's Judas Iscariot. There's no two ways about it. He is. So I'm hoping that they're not going to do that with the Dead Boy Detective because there was always a sort of a. We know they were kids. We know they died when they were very young, and then they come back to. Well, they didn't come back to life, but they their spirits decided to stay on this mortal plane to solve crimes and mysteries and and everything that no mere mortal could could solve. So I'm hoping we don't get too much of a backstory with these characters. With that. But we'll see. And on completely comparison though, I loved this comic. I loved this series in any case. If you're not buying this comic, seriously think about picking up and trade if you can. It is a great series. If you like Hawkeye, you will love this. If you like, uh, what's the other one they just brought out? 
recently. Oh, my mind's gone blank. I can't think of it. There's another one that's a bit like Hawkeye, where you've got a character, and they've brought them down to the sort of street level. They've they've basically taken the costume off of them, and they've said, "This is what they're like every day." Um, yeah, this is just brilliant. Superior Foes of Spider-Man number seven. A great series. Absolutely brilliant series. Uh, this one we see a bit of a glimpse into the past of the Beetle, and in the last issue, I'm sure. Wow, spoilers, just in case you haven't read it, and you're going to get the trade off of what I said. Spoilers, okay? Spoilers for this. All right, I'll put it up, okay? And then when I take it down, you'll know you can listen again, okay? Right, here we go. The Beetle is Tombstone's daughter. Okay. Right, you can come back and listen now. Right. Uh, yeah, this is just a brilliant comic. Every single issue has just been making me laugh, and not only not only making me laugh because it's a funny joke, a funny comic, but also it's been keeping me enthralled in reading this because it's not just a comedy comic. It is quite a serious comic as well, in in that sort of vein. Uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant series, fantastic. The last two, let's have a look. Just have a look at comments before I go to the last two. And then after that, I shall open up. Well, I shall see what everyone says about this. Michael Moore, uh, apologies, it's massively late. We'll have to rewatch from the beginning. Been chatting to Steve McKee. That's not a problem, dude. I've got no problem with that. That's the wonders of this new modern technology thing. I can record this live. People can watch it live, and then if you want later on, you can watch it back on YouTube. It's brilliant. I think when it works. <laughs> uh, Steve McKee. Yeah, you're tardy as well. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, it's down here. Steve's blaming Mike, and Mike's blaming Steve. Yeah, you're both as bad as one another. We know your sort. Yeah, don't worry about it. Do seriously. Um, right, last two comics for tonight. I haven't read this one yet either. I I haven't read this one yet. Um, I'm looking really looking forward to reading it. It is J. Michael Straczynski's The Twilight Zone, number one from Dynamite. I am so looking forward to reading this. I love the old Twilight Zone series, the old black and white ones, when they had them out in the, in the 50s and 60s. Loved the the movies when they had with like Dan Aykroyd and that in it. Uh, I loved the modern series of The Twilight Zone they had in the 90s. Then they have a third series of Twilight Zone that come out. It's like around about the early 2000s. Or am I mistaking that for something else? But yeah, really looking forward to reading that. It's going to be great stuff. Shortly. And finally, oh, as I adjust myself because I'm getting butt ache here from sitting on perching on my sofa. Finally, another comic from Dynamite, actually. They're doing great guns at the moment. Uh, I, I am interested in steampunk. Uh, if you don't know what steampunk is, for anybody out there who doesn't know what steampunk is, it is uh, it is um, uh, it's like an alternative reality where you had modern technology but it was around the Victorian sort of Edwardian time and everything is powered by steam <laughs> basically. Uh, it's it's it would be like uh, what would happen if the worlds of H.G. Wells came were reality. So you'd have things like War of the Worlds, uh, Time Machine, those sort of things. And what would happen if those things actually would happen? So you'd have you know, they've got like airships in there. You've got things like computers, but they're all brass and wood, and everybody wears weird goggles. <laughs> uh, lots of lots of women wearing tight bosom lifting bustiers and all that. And yeah, it's it's a really good comic. 
I'm looking forward to reading this, definitely. And it's also written by Bill Willingham as well. So there you go. Leg oh, I think you were sorry. Legendary, a steampunk adventure. Okay. And just to, just to be clear, anybody who's watching this and they are a steampunk fan and you think, that was just my interpretation of what steampunk is. Or I, I know that's not the correct interpretation of what it is, but, you know, it's a close analogy of it. So, yeah, but looking forward to this. This has got Green Hornet, Vampirella, and Red Sonja, but in, like, a, a Victorian England time where modern technology is there, but it's all steampunky, you know, sort of like industrialised, for want of a better word. Ah, right, okay, here we go. I am going to go onto Facebook now. And I'm going to go on to my comment where people have said whether they want me to open the open it or not open it. Uh, right, I need to get to the YouTube comic book community page. I need to get to my comment that I made on here about opening this comic. Talk amongst yourselves, guys. <laughs> wow, it's way down. That's not fair. Here we go. 16 comments on there. Okay, so we've got one for open it. One for leave it, two for leave it. Three for leave it, one for open it. Uh, two for open it, three for leave it. Now I know on the YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, on my last video, this is all getting complicated now, remember that guys, three for, what was it, three for, what did I say, three, three for leave it, that was it, two for open it, okay, three for leave it, two for open it. Tension. Oh, the suspense. Uh, is that 31 comments on my last one? Well, that's not bad. Right, here we go. So, three for leave it, two for open it. Three for leave it, two for open it. And this is making great live video, isn't it? This is making great live video. Uh, four for leave it, two for open it. Five for leave it, two for open it. Let's just get the comments on here. Five for leave it, three for open it. And that was Facebook just bedinking. So that's three for open it, five for leave it. Four for open it, five for leave it. Five for open it, five for leave it. No way. So five people have voted for opening it, five people have voted for leaving it. <laughs> right, quickly, guys. All right. <laughs> just quickly, just put open it or leave it, all right? Oh, 
Oh, actually, no, Mr. B Mr. Bell, Bills. Mr. Bills remark. Sorry, I missed your remark. Six for open it, five for leave it. I'm opening it. Here we go. Um, I shall get my trusty Swiss Army knife out. So where did I see that? There was a TV program I was watching. A TV program I was watching, and they used a Swiss Army knife to kill somebody with it. Oh yeah, it was True Crimes. That was it on YouTube. There's a documentary sort of thing about um, true crimes and that. And I was bored, so I was watching some of that. Something actually, something that actually happened in the UK as well. I thought to myself, why would you want to do that? You damaged the balloon while Swiss Army knife. That's no, it's wrong. Just where my mind works. Sorry. Right here we go. I'm opening it. I'm opening it. Here we go. Look. I'm making a complete pig's ear out of it. There we go. We're in. We're in. We've broken the seal. Right. Okay. It's probably worth it. Right. There's the comic. Which I can't get out. That's the comic. It smells no different. Really nice artwork inside, though. So there it is. Avengers 24 point now. Completely nude. Yeah. <laughs> and here is the poster that come with it. This is the poster that come with it. Oh, cool, it's one-sided. Whoa. This is mahoosive. Oh, dude. Um, right, I'm going to have to do it like this, I think. This is the poster for it. That was in this in this one. Is it? There you go. That was the poster that was in it. That's massive. I know you got to do that really weird sort of like flip floppy thing of my that concertina thing by trying to put it back together. Again. <sighs> I'm spent now. I don't have anybody else. Somebody's left because I opened it. <laughs> Put that back in like that, like that. It is a beautiful cover. I know these these pictures, like I said, appeared on the covers, variant covers for certain issues of Avengers comic. So I'm look. I might I might see about picking them up actually because they look really cool. So so there you go. That's it. And even though it was a very small haul, I still managed to talk for over an hour. Oh man. Right, thank you everybody for watching. Just let me just check on the comments. Thirteen comments. So somebody has commented on here. No, it says 13 comments, but it's only 12 comments up there. That's weird. Uh, yeah, oh, weird. Okay, anyway. Um, unless it was Rom's comic saying open it. Ah, it was Rom's comic. Sorry, dude. Rom's comic saying open it, go for it. So there you go. That was seven. Seven for five for open it. Excellent. Right. <sighs> right. That's it. No more. That's all for now. Thank you all for watching. Thank you everybody, all six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, seven, six, five, eight viewers that we had on this video. Thank you every single person for watching this. It's, it, with every one of these videos, it's always fun when you guys are watching this with me, especially when I can read your comments and everything. Brilliant stuff. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Facebook, as well, for bedinking halfway through this. <laughs> Uh, thank you everybody who's going to be watching this video uh, when it goes up properly on YouTube. Uh, I know my videos get about around about 150 to 200 views per video, but I certainly get a few comments. So I just say to people out there who are viewing this video, please feel free to comment down below in the comment section, even if it's just to say hi. Uh, even if it's just to say you you know something extra about the comics or the books or the magazines or even the mugs that I showed uh, on this video or any of my videos in fact just go back and make comments on those videos I love to read comments I love to comment back to people uh, if I haven't already you know, spoke to them on this video with their comments uh, yeah thumbs up if you like the video seems like a fairly decent thing to do. If you didn't like the video, feel free to thumbs down. But I always say, if you do thumbs it down, just say why you thumbs it down. So that's that. I got somebody thumbs thumbsing, thumbing down one of my videos, and their comment to me was, "I thumbs down your video because you waste a lot of money." I don't waste a lot of money. I buy comics. I buy figurines, I buy it. That's, that's not wasting it, that's just using it to a better advantage than giving it to the tax man or the government, that's why I say it anyway, plus as well as I'm helping the economy grow by me buying my comics and that, so, so <laughs> yes, that just leaves me now, for no further ado to say, again, thank you all for watching, take care, love the comics that you read, and I will hopefully see you guys soon, ta-ta for now.